It's been pretty evident over the past two years that the government wants people to be as lazy and complicit as possible. From the extremely high unemployment payments, more than people were actually making, to working from home, plus plenty of commie bullshit trying to convince people that you should be able to sit at home, do nothing, and collect a check. What's the end goal here? Universal basic income based on your social credit score? How much you kiss the boots of the government? Complete automation with robot workers? Is that why there was a chip shortage? A subreddit for those who want to end work, are curious about ending work, want to get the most out of a work-free life, want more information on anti-work ideas, and want personal help with their own jobs, work-related struggles. Now it's painfully obvious this is an orchestrated agenda and is gathering support from what I would assume people that can't get a job or haven't actually worked a day in their life. Maybe they're still sitting on their ass collecting unemployment. It's crazy how posts have hit the top of Reddit every single day from this new anti-work section. Allegedly, dozens of millions of people would have to be supporting it for that to happen. But is that why one third of the top posts are obviously fake accounts? Fake number one. Dude posts a story about how he was overworked at his job, claimed to crank out 50 videos per day, found his company was still using his Google Drive folder, then deleted all of it. The account is only one month old, and the story has too many holes in it to make sense. Impossible workload, gross underestimation of salary, and deleting that folder would probably subject him to legal action. What's really crazy is this was the top post at 152,000 upvotes. The story wasn't anything special. No famous company, nothing super dramatic or noteworthy. Fake number two. Another account only one month old. Shills for crypto and NFTs, then magically gets to the top post on Reddit. Need I say more? No one is paying $1,500 in rent and working $12 an hour. Fake number three. Again, account has only been posting for a few months and makes a post about being sent an email requesting money contribution for Christmas presents from their supervisor. Now this person obviously wouldn't risk their job to make a social media post. Even though he censored out the names, there's dozens of employees at his job that would be able to recognize the post. If this person truly cared enough about his job to censor the names, they would have deleted the post once they saw it explode in popularity in fear of that recognition. Fake number four. This account's second post on Reddit makes it to the top of the front page. Unheard of. Obviously fake post complaining that the company's profiting more, so hey, the employee should make more money. Classic pointing fingers at the rich bad guys without naming anyone or group of people. Fake number five. First post on Reddit gets 84,000 upvotes yeah, what planet? What's comical is that anyone who understands business would realize the ridiculousness of the demands and that this story is obviously fake. He claims that a 10% increase in pay to all staff and Monday being an optional workday was accepted. You have to be smoking crack to think any business would pay their staff 10% more for 20% less work. Fake number six. Someone claims to be from Russia talking about how much better working conditions are for everyone. Is that why the average salary in Russia is $2,000 per month? Half of what people are making over here and Russia is like, like the slate for communism. It's fucking common. You know, it's really ridiculous. Hundreds of people allegedly lost their lives in the Kentucky tornadoes over the weekend. And I say allegedly because the news is completely fake. They staged so many of these events. Who knows if it actually happened? This clown goes and blames the rich for making people work during the tornadoes. Six dead in Amazon warehouse in Illinois. More than 80 fewer dead at the Mayfield Candle Factory in Kentucky. These were senseless deaths of lives that mattered. The rich are actively taking lives for profit. How many more lives will they take from us? The strikes, the boycotts, they aren't enough. Well, listen, buddy, if you want to talk about the rich taking our lives, you got some bigger things to talk about. This is a distraction from the truth saying the rich are just evil and want to make money, when in reality, they're satanic and are using geoengineering to wage war against the unknowing masses. 
regardless of whether people are at work or in their homes. Anti-work is a globalist backed social engineering campaign, an echo chamber of victims stuck in victim mentality. They think the world should be fair and easy for them, that the reality of the world at hand should conform to accommodate their first world problems. They depend on authority. They fail to realize that they are the operators of their lives and have all the tools necessary to solve their own problems. Globalists do not want that. They want sad victims who can't accept the world for what it is. I mean, it's pretty obvious when you start naming names or pointing out the real players that it gets shut down immediately. They just want people to be in a victim mindset without pointing out the real problem. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you could please drop a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank defoncom to support me through all of my businesses. Thanks again for joining, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.